for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Chelsea. And Chelsea is a gymnast with complaints of diffuse lower back pain and feelings of instability. The patient reports that trunk flexion and holding her breath alleviate the symptoms. During the examination, the therapist finds that the L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced relative to the segment below. Which of the following is the most likely present? So we have A, L4-5 anterolisthesis. L4 to L5 anterolisthesis. B, lumbarization of the sacrum. C, L4-5 herniated nucleus propulsus. And D is L5-S1 anterolisthesis. All right. So let's go up to the top here. We have Chelsea. Chelsea is a gymnast with complaints of diffuse lower back pain and feelings of instability. I really want to stop there for a moment because right when you start to say things like gymnast, lower back pain, and feelings of instability, there's some things that start to kind of like rattle off in my mind. One of those things is spondylolisthesis. And not necessarily always. I mean, it could be a spondylolysis, but the fact that it says instability, that's consistent with the spondylolisthesis. Now, it really, you know, this whole thing resonates with me as far as, you know, thinking about spondylolisthesis because of the gymnast part of it as well. Because young, you know, gymnasts, females, they're really prone to having a spondylolisthesis. And if you're not familiar with that, that is an actual slippage of one vertebra over another. All right. And so as we continue down the question, it says the patient reports that trunk flexion and holding her breath alleviate the symptoms. And I think that that's important as well, because we've got to think about why would trunk flexion assist? Why would holding your breath assist or doing Valsalva? What does that really do? And so what I start to think about is, you know, that, that pressure, it's like increased intra-abdominal pressure, right? And so if we increase that, what does it provide? Stability. It does, right? So we're holding our breath and it provides stability around the spine. That's one way that we can get it. And so I really like that piece. Now, as we continue down the question, it says, during the examination, the therapist finds that the L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced relative to the segment below. Now, does that not like jump off at you? Like, okay, now I know we're dealing with some type of spondylolisthesis type deal because that's not really consistent with a herniated disc. Can the patient present to you with instability with a herniated disc? Yeah, they can complain of instability. They can. But, you know, during an examination, finding that the an L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced to the level below, it's just not consistent with a disc problem. All right. And so the question stem here says, which of the following is the most likely present? Let's go down to our answer choices. For those of you on the podcast right now, I'll, I'll rattle these off again. A is L4, L5 anterolisthesis. B, lumbarization of the sacrum. C, L4, L5 herniated nucleus propulsus. And D is L5, S1 anterolisthesis. All right, so let's go to work. A is L4, L5 anterolisthesis. That it, this is a form of a spondylolisthesis. All right, so that's first things first. Okay, now... When you're looking at a spondylolisthesis, one of the things that is very common, you can find this in your McGee book, you can find this in a lot of your orthopedic texts that talk about spondylolisthesis. They talk about this thing called a step-off deformity, step sign, step deformity. There's a bunch of different names for it. And the way you can examine a patient is by running your finger uh, down their lumbar spine, or you can run your finger up their lumbar spine. It doesn't really matter. And what you're feeling for is not just a little bump, but you're also feeling for that anterior displacement of a spinous process relative to the segment below. That's what you're looking for, and it's called a step deformity. 
Now here's the deal. In the question, it says that the patient has an L4 spinous process that's anteriorly, anteriorly displaced relative to the segment below. Okay, so does that make it an L4, L5 anterolisthesis? Mm, so this is the most commonly selected answer. And for those of you who are on the podcast right now, you may have to tune into the YouTube version of this so you can actually see what I'm about to put up on the screen. I'm actually going to put up a picture of the lumbar spine, but also a picture of somebody who has a spondylolisthesis. All right. So you can see that in this picture, the, the L4 spinous process is shifted anteriorly relative to the one below. You can see that, right? So those of you who are in the car right now, I want you to visualize it. Visualize you running your finger up the patient's back. You feel L5 spinous process sticking out at you. Great. And then as you continue to move your finger up, you feel that air L4 is anterior now. Okay. So that's exactly what this question is talking about. The question really is, well, is that an L4, L5 slip? Or is that an L5S1 slip? And so we all need to look at this right now in the picture that I'm showing you. You can definitely see that the L4 right here, spinous process, is sitting anteriorly. But where is the actual problem? You can see that the spondylolisthesis, the actual slippage, is L5S1. Hmm. So what am I really saying to you right now? What I'm really saying is that there's a rule that you can follow when a patient's having spondylolisthesis. You want to know what that is? All right, the rule is that wherever you have that anterior displacement, wherever you have what is called the step deformity, the level below is the one where the slippage is occurring. Let me say that again. The level of your uh, uh, actual uh, anterior displacement, all right? The level of that, let's say that's L4, and in this case it is. The level below it is actually going to be the one where it has the slippage, or also known as the anterior listhesis. So I don't like A, because A is saying that it's happening at L4, L5, and that's not true. That's not true. The slippage isn't happening here in the picture. The slippage is actually happening at the level below it, also known as L5S1. I don't like A. Let's look at B, lumbarization of the sacrum. I don't like lumbarization of the sacrum. If you don't know what that really means, it's, it's where your S1 becomes mobile. It's where your S1 becomes a part of your lumbar spine. And it's not fused any longer. And so we actually call it like an L6 instead of S1. And so this isn't as common to happen, but that's exactly what lumbarization of the sacrum is. And is that what I'm dealing with here? The answer to that is no. That's not consistent with an L4 spinous process that's anteriorly displaced. Let's go ahead and put an X next to that. C, L4, L5 herniated nucleus propulses. Well, we set up in the question that... Yeah, you could have a, a person have a herniated disc that complains of instability. They complain of lower back pain. So that's true. But one of the pieces is the patient reports trunk flexion alleviates the symptoms. And with a herniated disc, that's not really that common. A lot of times if they do like extension repeatedly, something like that, that could reduce the symptoms. But flexion, not typically. All right. But even beyond that, to nail it, nail the coffin shut with this L4, L5 herniated disc, we would not expect the L4 spinous process to be sitting anteriorly to the level below. That's not consistent with a herniated disc. I'll put an X next to that one. Let's look at D as our final. It says L5 S1 anterolisthesis, and that's exactly what we were talking about previously. This question really came down to, is it an L4, L5 anterior listhesis or is it an L5, S1 anterior listhesis? And again, we'll go back to our picture. That way we can see all of this again. You're looking at the lumbar spine. This is L5. This is L4. 
and this is L3. All right, when we run our finger, let's imagine our fingers right here, and we run our finger up the patient's spine, what do you feel? Well, you feel the sacrum as you're running up. Then you feel L5, right? But then as you go up to L4, you notice that now it's sitting anteriorly. It's anteriorly displaced, just like this question is saying. Now, in order for you to name this correctly, you have to know, okay, what level is the actual slippage? Is it going to be L4, L5 slippage? Where L4 is slipping over L5? Or is L5 slipping over S1? And from this picture, you can see that the break, the actual spondylolisthesis, is occurring at the level of L5. And so L5 is actually slipping over S1. For those of you who need me to go back through that, that statement again of how I always look at these, I always look at what level is the one that is anteriorly displaced. So is that L4? All right, so that's L4 in this case. Great. Well, if you want to name the spondylolisthesis, the slippage is always the level below. All right? So in this case, it was an L4 spinous process that was anteriorly displaced. And so we go a level below, which would make that L5-S1. Final answer here is D, L5-S1. I know that was a bit of a trickier one. It all comes down to your ability to you know, understand how to look at a step deformity, how to name it. Um, this could be very tricky if you're not understanding, okay, where the slippage is supposed to occur and all of that. So congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. It is definitely warranted for you to go and spend some time in this area to make sure you're prepared for it on the NPTE. This is one of these common conditions that can't easily show up.